Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello dear learners, I welcome all of you back to the lecture series on Introduction to Science Fiction Studies. I hope you have been enjoying so far. This lecture is particularly the one you have been waiting for so long. All those science fiction movie fans out there, you must give a big shout out for this lecture. So in this lecture, we are going to discuss a lot of amazing facts and fiction about science fiction. Not only we are going to discuss about the stories, we will also discuss about the technologies that are shown in the uh, movies and which are actually used. It will be a very fun time this one hour, so let us take the ride and enjoy it. Science fiction movies down the ages. So not only will we be talking about the latest science fiction movies, we will also be talking about the science fiction movies of the earliest of periods when science fiction came into being on screen, of course. So what was the first movie do you think that uh, can we can uh, categorize it uh, that one as science fiction? First science fiction movie ever, La Voyage Dans la Luna, A Trip to the Moon, released in 1902. This we are living in the world 2023. So almost 100 years and 120 years back, we had this movie released called A Trip to the Moon, directed by Georges Melius. It's a French name, so maybe I am not pronouncing it properly. but the point is this is the first science fiction movie that was ever made and it was a silent black and white short film of course it's a short film it, it was perhaps for 10 15 minutes that runs for about 12 minutes yeah 12 minutes so this silent black and white movie of 12 minutes of length remember a trip to the moon or la voyage dans la luna this particular movie was the first science fiction movie and it was released in 1902, 121 years ago. The inspiration chiefly of this movie goes to Jules Verne's novel From Earth to the Moon, 1865 and H.E. Wells' The First Men on the Moon, 1901. So these two novels, one is Jules Verne, one is A.G. Wells. I'm sure you have read about these two people. We have discussed them in one of our lectures, which is specifically dedicated to Verne, uh, Stevenson, Wells and Huxley. So the, if you want to have a reference, you can go back to the lecture and uh, listen to whatever contents were delivered. So there we have come across this particular, these two novels from the earth to the moon and the first man in the moon these two novels inspired this French director and producer Mr. Georges Melius to cinematize the story of traveling from earth to the moon right so how was this movie actually shot the movie was shot via trick photography it was shown that uh, passengers they were sitting on a barrel uh, cylindrical kind of thing then they were forced to go you know they were uh, thrown onto the surface of the moon and the moon was shown like a face, moon had a face and everything and uh, these passengers they just landed on the eye of the moon. All these are fantastical things that you will see, it is available on YouTube so you just go and type a trip to the moon and you will get the movie. Right, so the technology that was shown in the movie, it was not really a technology, it was just a kind of make believe kind of stuff that yes something was there which was thrown onto the surface of the moon. But the idea of that technology, now we have, we have something called rockets, right? So that time there was no concept of rockets. And yes, let me tell you, there is another movie uh, released by the same director, made by the same director. We will talk about this in some time. 
so the technology they actually used at that time was trick photography if you just type trick photography you will get the entire thing of how that thing is happening then we have 20000 leagues under the sea 1907 early adaptation of jules verne's classic novel again directed by georges melies so this particular person Georges Méliès he was specially interested in science fiction and he wanted to adapt these science science fiction works the uh, most popular science fiction works in literature into the realm of movies filmed underwater so this movie was filmed underwater the underwater scenes were photographed by the Williamson Submarine Film Corporation in the Bahamas so the the camera that they uh, recorded the movie with that camera did not have the technology of resisting water it was not water resistant and it would uh, you know become uh, uh, the camera would be damaged if it went under water so what they did was they hired a submarine they hired a submarine and inside from inside that submarine they shot the movie right The Lost World, nineteen twenty-five. This is one again. Uh, right, see, uh, this movie was released in nineteen zero two. Then we have Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Water, nineteen zero seven. Now we'll talk of the Lost World that was released in nineteen twenty-five. This movie was directed by Harry O. Hoyt. Again, let me tell you, all of these movies that we are discussing right now, they were silent movies. They did not have any dialogues in them. Only caricatures of the characters who were on screen. Uh, they were pointing at each other or trying to make a scene so that the audience understands that what is going on. So it is some sort of uh, dramatic movements were also necessary to convey the message of what was going on. So silent film is based on Arthur Conan Doyle's novel of the same name. It follows a group of explorers who discover prehistoric creatures in a remote plateau. stop motion special effects right it follows a group of explorers who discovered prehistoric creatures in a remote plateau stop motion special effects that time there was the dinosaur concept which was very popular uh, uh, the uh, the archaeologists they were uh, coming up with all sorts of dinosaur bones and they were showing it to the world see this kind of creature existed so people made a conjecture the dinosaur would look like this and they created a kind of silhouette they created a kind of shape where uh, suppose they could not create an entire dinosaur that would create a problem of uh, shooting the film so what they did was they would create a hand of a dinosaur or the face of a dinosaur or whatever the part they wanted to film and then stop motion photography that is suppose the dinosaur is going to put out its hand so one photo is uh, when they click clicked uh, when the hand is over here the other one they clicked when the hand is over here the other one they clicked when the hand progresses a little further so this is stop motion photography so that time they did not have the technology to actually um, make a dinosaur move which we have right now right we call it animation so they did not have that animation technology the computer the technological advancement of the era only permitted stop motion photography so this is one of the most important uh, works later on of course during the jurassic park franchise if you are familiar with it they have this uh, entire animation done In 1927 right after the lost world directed uh, metropolis was a movie that was released directed by fritz lang now lang was a merciless director merciless director in the sense that he uh, made his actors perform a scene again and again and again and again till the actor is exhausted but until and unless he thought that the scene is perfect till that time he made the actors act it out so he is one of the most popular actors just because of this the futuristic city with star class divisions so in metropolis he uh, imagines a futuristic city where the class division that is the higher class the upper class lower class middle class upper middle lower middle there is a host of there is a range of class divisions happening over there in that futuristic city a camera on a swing so these are the technologies that were used during that time 
a camera on a swing and most notably the Scofton process in which mirrors are used to create the illusion that actors are occupying miniature sets. In order to create a futuristic city, at that time I told you there was no concept of 3D imagining or animation, 3D animation. So how can you create a futuristic city? You have to you know, put up buildings, you have to put up alleyways, you have to put up tube rails, everything. So what they did was they made a very miniature set of that. A miniature set that could fit you know a ground and uh, by using the Scufton process this is a way by which you know the characters reflections are uh, sort of added to that miniature scale of city so that was how the entire movie was shot in which mirrors are used to create the illusion that the actors are occupying miniature sets so in that futuristic city which was you know yay small a tiny piece uh, if of course if i am going to spread a city like this over here i cannot go and act inside it right uh, so what they will do is they will put a mirror in front of me and the mirror will reflect the photo and they will convert it into a miniature size using a lens and that lens they will put inside that city that we have made very interesting then alita Queen of Mars, 1924, directed by Yakov Protasnov. This Soviet science fiction film is based on the novel Alita by Alexei Tolstoy, Martian Sets and Costumes. So this particular movie, it did not have any sort of trick photography or anything. This entire movie was uh, a, a shot within a design set. So the set was, you know, perhaps an area where many rooms and places were built uh, separately to show that this is the Martian landscape, this is the Martian palace, this is the Martian throne. So everything was built separately and costumes and all the actors who were acting in that movie, they were given costumes uh, designed specifically to create the effect of uh, the Martian civilization, culture, um, politics, communication process, everything was designed separately. Now this is one of the most interesting movies so far apart from A Trip to the Moon. This particular movie, Woman in the Moon or Frau in Mond, again directed by Fritz Lang. So Fritz Lang is that German director who is very, very notorious for making a scene perfect. And let me tell you, this movie is the one which created the countdown to zero before a locket launch. Before that, nobody had ever imagined of counting down from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, like this, this countdown, something big is going to happen, right? So this movie is the first ever record of this kind of countdown. The rocket launching that is happening right now, uh, that countdown is also in, uh, taken from this entire tradition of countdowns. So shot with an actual rocket, this actual rocket was built in order to show the journey of this particular character to the moon. But let me tell you this rocket, uh, because this rocket was used in the movie and uh, it was, this rocket had the same kind of specifications like the V2 rocket which was designed by Germany and they thought that our secrets are out. So they banned this movie and this movie showing was stopped everywhere. Right, so very interesting, explores the concept of space travel to the moon, first occurrence countdown to zero. Now we will discuss the futuristic technologies shown in science fiction movies. Spaceships and space travel, I am sure all of the movies that are being released right now about Star Wars, Star Trek, Avengers, everywhere you will find at least mention of a spaceship or multiple varieties of spaceship, the mother spaceship, the uh, drone spaceships, every, everywhere. This is a very common trope right now used. Science fiction movies frequently feature advanced spacecraft and interstellar travel technologies allowing character to explore distant planets and galaxies. So this particular word interstellar, I'm sure you know we have discussed it while we were discussing the time and space and science fiction. 
Interstellar is traveling from one solar system to another solar system. Every science fiction movie nowadays have this kind of idea of having at least a spaceship on board. Artificial Intelligence AI AI is a prominent theme in science fiction films with sentient robots, androids and intelligent computer systems often taking center stage. Can you imagine, can you remember any of the movies that you have seen so far uh, that has an AI or a robot or a machine uh, kind of thing which is taking the center stage? I can tell you the um, Indian version of that, that is Robot. Robot is a movie where our favorite hero, uh, the Anna of the South, uh, which is Rajnikanth, he has acted the character of Robot. And I'm sure that if India is a, making so many robot and AI related movies like Shah Rukh Khan has, re I think uh, almost seven, eight years back, he released Ra One, uh, maybe more than that, even 10 years by now. So there you find a video game character coming to life and acting like a robot. So all these things are very common to the science fiction domain right now. These are the examples that I'm giving are from Indian science fiction. But there are umpteen number of examples from Western science fiction movies which has been using this AI or robot trope since long. Next we have time travel. Time travel technology allows characters to journey backward or forward in time leading to various narrative possibilities and paradoxes. I'll give you the most famous example nowadays about time travel and its paradoxes and the problems it can create is the TV series Dark. You go and watch this TV series and you will see what I'm trying to tell you about uh, bootstrap paradoxes, grandfather paradoxes. You will understand what actually they are, what it might look like when it comes to the story or the narrative. Holograms and virtual reality. I'm sure you have seen that uh, uh, in a movie suddenly you keep one object like this in front of you and from that object rays come out like this and from that rays a, a figure of a human being is shown right moving around this and that. So that is the uh, idea of a hologram. Holograms and virtual reality. So when we talk about virtual reality, we know what we understand. That is one person entering into the virtual world, creating their own profile, looking around here and there. So when you are inside a game, you are inside a virtual reality. When, uh, of course, you, we uh, will be talking about video games uh, um, only maybe in the next lecture. So. Whenever you are entering a game like PUBG or Counter-Strike or any other very popular multiplayer games, you will find that you are entering a landscape. There are trees, there are animals, there are buildings and you are moving here and there. Other uh, uh, racing games are also there, Asphalt uh, 9 is there, then Grand Theft Auto is there. Then uh, we have a very recent uh, notorious game that is Vice City. All there you will find that you are moving around in a kind of reality which is not the reality but is a reflection of it. So the science fiction often portrays advanced holographic technology and immersive visual reality environments. Immersive. When I say immersive, it means that you are immersed, completely immersed in that. For example, in the um, latest uh, release of the video game, you will find um, Assassin's Creed. It is a very famous video game where the graphics is so wonderful that you will, f it is wonderful really, that you will start feeling that you are actually inside that terrain. It started with uh, Lara Croft. Tomb Raider, that game changed the entire perception of virtual reality and video gaming experiences. So once you go and search, you will find lots and lots of data regarding that. Teleportation. Teleportation devices or system allow characters to instantaneously transport from one location to the another. In movies, we have found this, um, you know, in multiple places. Uh, if you remember a cartoon movie uh, that is Monster.Inc, you will find that the monsters are 
uh, going into the cabinets, the closets of the uh, children who are sleeping in order to scare them, right? They have multiple doors in front of them. They open one door, they enter one kid's bedroom. They open another door, they enter another kid's bedroom. So whenever you are opening a door, you are actually creating a portal. It is teleportation. You are getting ported to a different location instantaneously. Then you have biotechnology and genetic engineering. Science fiction movies explore the concept of genetic manipulation resulting in genetically enhanced individuals, hybrid creatures or dystopian societies. So if you are not really afraid of zombies, then you can go and watch this movie, Resident Evil. You will see what kind of uh, genetic manipulation of a virus then it uh, spreads among people and how it is creating zombies and a dystopian society. So all of these things are included in this kind of genetic engineering. Resident Evil is a very uh, old movie kind of thing, old in the sense it is it was released I think 20 years back. Nowadays uh, you can have this movie, you can look at this movie Rampage. Rampage is a movie where uh, two animals from belonging to two particular species, they were genetically modified. And once they are genetically modified, they have become humongous, right? Rampage. Nanotechnology. Nanobots and nanotechnology play a role in many science fiction films, enabling characters to heal injuries, alter appearances or manipulate matter at a molecular level. I'm sure you know, you are uh, familiar with the character of Wolverine. Have you seen Wolverine? Wolverine can actually uh, recover his own body. So the uh, metal that was inserted into his body, it went on to, uh, it, it became a sort of nanotechnology inside his body. So whenever his body was injured, it was healing itself. Then you will have robots, small tiny robots which will enter your body and do all the things. So nanotechnology is, is being developed right now, but in movies they have had a separate dimension of imagination altogether. Alternate realities and parallel universes. Some science fiction movies delve into the idea of alternate realities or parallel universes, where characters experience different versions of themselves and their worlds. The most recent is Spider-Man in Spider-Verse and Spider-Man uh, 4, I think. Then you can have the movie uh, Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. You can have this one also. There you will be shown that there is a parallel range of universes inside that particular um, narrative where things are happening at the same time in all the universes. It's very interesting. Energy weapons and force fields. Advanced energy based weapons and protective force fields are often depicted in futuristic battle scenes. If you see the uh, battle scenes, especially in Avengers and others, you will find they are creating a shield out of thin air. They are, uh, suppose there is an attack coming and suddenly somebody does like this and the shield is created right in front of that person. So that shield is a kind of a field of energy brought together at, uh, or concentrated at a point. Right, so force fields all around, for example, you take the character of Jane from the um, X-Men series. Jane has the capacity to uh, move around things. How does she do that? It is said that she creates a force field around her by which she can manipulate any matter. Right. Similarly, you will have the example of um, other, uh, uh, especially characters of the Avenger series, X-Men series, Star Trek series and Star Wars series, where people are able to create a force field around themselves. And energy weapons. Energy weapons are very uh, popular, especially in the Star Wars and the um, Transformer series. They're you will have uh, a kind of nuclear uh, cannons from where you will be um, 
uh, shooting nuclear rays or laser weapons so all these things are futuristic technologies but they are uh, we still do not have a nuclear cannon for example we cannot just have a small device and make it act uh, like a, a nuclear device especially and control it at the same time so that is not possible for us still date but we are hoping that will go there mind computer interfaces science fiction explores the concept of direct interfaces between human minds and computers allowing characters to assess information or control machines with their thoughts the most important or the most famous among this is the matrix you will be actually plugged into a machine and your consciousness will be transferred into that machine and the machine will create an entire world and your personality will be this is one of the examples of mind computer interfaces another example you will find in avatar i'm sure you're familiar with that also avatar the blue people on the planet pandora right so there you will find this kind of technology where uh, this um, our protagonist goes into inside a machine and the machine creates a kind of uh, portal through which his consciousness is taken from his body and put into another body so that is mind computer interfaces anti gravity and hovering technology some science fiction movies feature anti gravity devices or technology that enables vehicles and objects to hover or float hovercraft is still something we are actually uh, designing or it has been designed really but anti gravity is not something that we have in our uh, place right now so what we do um, is that we create a kind of uh, motion in space in order to get gravity of course there is no gravity in space so if we have to shoot something which uh, pertains or which is outside the laws of physics outside the laws of gravity then we uh, use special motions uh, and special photography in order to create that kind of effect cybernetics and body enhancement characters in science fiction movies have been have cybernetic implants bionic limbs or other body enhancement that augment their abilities so cybernetics and bio enhancement i'm sure um, uh, we have already come across uh, some of the characters uh, with biological enhancements of their bodies that is if their heart is not working they have been given an electronic heart if their hand is cut off they are given an electronic arm the movies like i robot terminator you will find these kind of things happening where the human body is given technological upgrade right advanced medical technology science fiction often portrays medical advancements such as advanced healing devices organ regeneration or life extension technologies so in advanced medical technologies is again a part of that body enhancement kind of thing this is done when suppose the person's heart is failing or the person has suffered an accident that person is helped through the way of uh, technology right so this is another trope in movies you will find uh, for example if you go to elysium there is actually a kind of machine which checks you from top to toe whatever is wrong with you it will immediately correct it so that kind of technology is also shown in the movies then we have climate and environmental control some science fiction movies depict technologies that can control weather or alter environmental conditions next we have mind control and memory manipulation science fiction explores the ethical and psychological implications of mind control and memory alteration technologies sometimes we see that uh, by reading a certain code a person is unlocking another person's hidden personality this you will find in captain america winter soldier series where a person has been conditioned to become a killer once that person hears those codes right so it is also something of a memory manipulation and mind control however 
apart from all those things that has been discussed so far, these particular technologies, these futuristic technologies are yet to find you know reality, to uh, find the present that we live in. So instead of actually having the technologies, the science fiction movies use these following technologies which I will be discussing right in front of you. What do they use? High resolution digital cameras. Number one component. If you don't have a high resolution camera, you might not be able to catch the exact images, the exact actions and then manipulate them using technology. Modern science fiction films often use high resolution digital cameras that capture intricate details and vibrant colors enhancing the visual quality of the final product. Then we have visual effects, VFX, very popular term nowadays among the movie lovers and the teenagers that what is the VFX used in this movie? We don't know. Let us see, we have recently there was a movie released called uh, Brahmastra in India and people are of the opinion, the movie reviewers are of the opinion is that whatever the storyline may be, but the visual effects are very, very fantastic. If it is seen in a big screen, then it is almost a mind blowing experience. So how is that brought forward? That is brought forward by using VFX. Visual effects are a critical aspect of science fiction filmmaking, allowing filmmakers to create otherworldly landscapes, creatures and phenomena that would be impossible or too expensive to achieve practically. If I want to capture a scenery uh, of the uh, topography or the landscape of moon, am I going to build a rocket and go to the moon, then film it over there and come back? Why don't I do one thing? I just capture a normal earth place which is empty and somewhat has a moon like feature. Then after I capture that image, I apply all the visual effects, all the color alterations and the topography alterations, change the contours and then make it look like the moon landscape. So that is what exactly visual effects are about. Green screen and chroma key. Uh, I'm sure you're watching this particular video lecture. You will see that there is a green screen at the back. Green screen is the uh, friend of science fiction films. What they do is they put a green screen and they also put people wearing that green co color costume. And when somebody is going to shoot a particular scene where it is impossible for a human being to do that particular caricature. So people in green dress, they come and they hold or help the actor do that particular feat. Because the background is green, the costumes of those people are green. Once you delete the green color from that entire scene after capturing it, the entire scene becomes a blank. So you can put any landscape behind that. It's a fantastic concept. Green screen technology allows actors to perform in front of a blank green or blue screen which is later replaced with computer generated backgrounds and elements during post production. Post production means after you have captured that scene, after that you go and uh, you want to say that this person was flying in front of Niagara Falls. Of course, it is not possible for us to fly in front of Niagara Falls. First of all, it is not possible for any human being to fly. But I will make a pose like this. Three people in green dress will come and lift me and I will make a face as if I am flying. Now I have the shot in front of me, right? Now only what the director or the editor has to do is remove that uh, particular uh, green color and put the Niagara Falls background behind me. Now I am flying in front of Niagara Falls. Motion capture or mocap. Motion capture technology records the movements of actors and translates them into realistic animations for CGI characters or creatures. This has been very, very much used by the movie Avatar. You will see Avatar, there are blue looking alien beings 
uh, who resemble human beings but actually have a more uh, good looking physique right so we did not create any costume what we did was we created the uh, the entire creature uh, in a 3d kind of panel and what we did for uh, their actions is the actors they were asked to go and act it out and there were pointers placed on their entire body so every time they were moving around in front of that camera the camera was not only recording their movements but also the computer which is attached to the camera it was recording what was the movement of the pointers which are on their body so next time the computer what the computer does is that that 3d image it already has it just simply transfers that 3d image to these movements done see simple miniatures and models while cgi has become dominant practical miniatures and models are still used in some science fiction movies to achieve special visual effects such as spaceship battles or cityscapes sometimes even nowadays miniature spaceships are used so that you know don't have to go and uh, shoot uh, or the 3d animation does not have to work you just create a miniature model and uh, you just have to shoot uh, a spaceship leaving a facility and moving to another you have to just hold it up in the air and you shoot it right because sky has no limit steady cam and gimbals these stabilizing camera systems allow for smooth and dynamic camera movements enhancing the any a cinematic experience in capturing action sequence with precision so steady cams and gimbals are like some suspending devices right they allow the camera to remain in a particular um, height from the ground even if you are moving the camera won't move so that is a very fantastic concept right drone technology drones are used to capture aerial shots and dynamic tracking shots that are previously challenging to achieve nowadays the most recent movie that has released is mission impossible the latest version of mission impossible movie that has been uh, released right now most of the action stuff where uh, the protagonist tom cruise is jumping off the edge of a mountain which is actually what he does it is not an animation let me tell you the protagonist tom cruise uh, the actor has actually jumped from a mountain on a bike so that entire shot has been shot using a, a drone camera practical effects while cgi is prevalent practical effects such as animatronics and prosthetics are still used to create tactile and realistic characters and creatures so animations and prosthetics they are still being used prosthetic means a kind of creature which is made out of rubber and say plastic so even these things are now being used but the technology has advanced so much at least the photographic technology or the computer technology of creating uh, cgi computer graphics imagery uh, these technologies have improved so much so that we are no longer uh, limited to the option of animation and prosthetics then we have high dynamic range hdr high dynamic range technology allows for capturing wide range of light and color resulting in more visually dynamic and vivid imagery if somebody runs in front of you you cannot catch that until and unless you have an hdr camera you will see something hazy if you have a normal camera but in order to capture all the muscle movements of that human being who is running in front of you you need an hdr virtual production advancements in virtual production technology such as using led walls and real time rendering engines enable filmmaker to create realistic virtual environments and shoot scenes in a controlled studio setting we will talk about virtual production right after some time when we will be talking about mandalorian 3d filming some science fiction movies are shot in 3d to add an extra dimension to the visual experience making the scenes appear more immersive and lifelike so the 3d filming that we have today they are uh, 
you know it is a kind of a camera which moves around right uh, there are multiple um, movies where you have shots like the camera when a person is going to hit another person the camera moves from your back portion to the front and while the person is hitting that person you are able to see the entire scene so that is 3d uh, filming computer controlled camera system that is also called triple cs computer controlled camera rigs allow for precise and repeatable camera movements particularly in complex visual effect sequences so when you want to repeat one camera movement so computer controlled camera system computer controlled camera rigs allow for precise and repeatable camera movements particularly in complex visual effect sequences you want to repeat a camera movement exactly the way you did it previously that case you cannot um, expect a human being to do it manually what you do is you program a computer to control a camera that is how the camera exactly records that sequence in multiple times uh, in, in in the same uh, camera uh, movement and you will be able to use those data to create a further complex image then we have lighting technologies creative lighting setups and techniques are used to create dramatic or futuristic atmospheres that suit the science fiction genre the mandalorian now we are going to talk about the virtual production that we were discussing over here mandalorian utilizes a cutting edge virtual production technique mandalorian we will also discuss about it later sometime it is called the stagecraft this particular technology is called stagecraft what does it do it involves the use of a massive led can you imagine a tv screen which is like the entire room it is not a normal single line tv screen the screen is like this this is the entire screen so the characters they are uh, uh, acting in this particular spot and this entire screen that is around them this is the stagecraft right it involves the use of a massive led video wall encompassing a 360 degree backdrop no i'm sorry it is not a semicircle it is a full circle it is a full circle that means if the actors are acting in this particular space then the screen is like this this particular thing is called stagecraft the video wall displays real time digital environments using advanced computer generated imagery so computer generated imagery that is if i want to show that the person is walk uh, moving around in the planet mars then i will just create a visual environment and put it here on the screen so my camera can move anywhere and the characters can move anywhere and still i will get the shot now we are going to discuss famous science fiction movies uh, since we have uh, almost exhaustively discussed all the possible futuristic technologies that can be seen in science fiction movies and also the actual capturing technologies so science fiction movies goes two ways one is whatever the future technologies they show and how actually the science fiction movies are made both are very interesting right so metropolis we have already discussed it was released in 1927 directed by fritz lang this is one of the famous movies is one early science fiction classic set in a futuristic city with a stark division between the privileged upper class and oppressed workers then we have forbidden planet a landmark science fiction film that takes place on a distant planet featuring advanced technology and a mysterious alien presence 2001 a space odyssey 1968 directed by stanley kubrick and based on a story by arthur c clark i'm sure you have heard about this movie and its actual novel the uh, novel was actually released along with the screenplay the movie was inspired from a short story called the sentinel it was written by arthur c clark 
after arthur c clark published the short story stanley kubrick was so much fascinated by the story that he went uh, to clark and said clark you please write a novel and i will write a screenplay i will release the movie you release the book great this virtually stunning film explores human evolution artificial intelligence and encounters with extraterrestrial life Star Wars original trilogy 1977 to 83 George Lucas let me tell you uh, the entire Mandalorian series is a Lucas production so George Lucas space opera saga beginning with Star Wars episode 4 a new hope revolutionized the genre introducing iconic characters and epic battle sets in a galaxy far far away so the entire set that has been designed at that time 1977 we did not have that kind of computer generated imagery effects and uh, the vfx was also not that strong so mostly they relied on sets and trick photography and also um on costumes so all of these things uh, prosthetics all of these things were very important during that time then we have matrix 1999 directed by wachowskis this film presents a dystopian reality where humans are trapped in a simulated world while a group of rebels seek to awaken them this is the entire idea in this movie first we get the anti gravity stunts we also see in this movie for the first time a person dodging a bullet and while he was dodging a bullet he was you know almost touching the floor uh, at the back but still he manages to get up so that action uh, is you know uh, an epic action that has ever been recorded during that time so people went gaga over that movie where humans are trapped in a simulated world and of course there in that very movie you will find everyone having a kind of plug at the back of their head so when they enter the uh, system what they do is they have a wire uh, which is plugged right into the back of the neck thereby uh, taking the human's consciousness and putting it into the machine the simulated machine which creates an idea that everybody is living in a city Blade Runner 1982 one of the most famous and uh, most watched movies directed by Ridley Scott this dystopian film features Harrison Ford as a blade runner tasked with hunting down rogue androids known as replicants in a cyberpunk future so Harrison Ford is the character who is uh, given the task that you go and kill all the rogue androids rogue androids means those robots who have gone rogue who do not listen to the command of the society anymore and they have established their own society their own community so you must go and uh, kill all of them and hence blade runner right interstellar 2014 another christopher nolan film interstellar explores space travel and the search for habitable planets in the face of earth's environment collapse we have discussed uh, this movie when we were discussing space we were discussing time that interstellar is such a movie with scientific accuracy so the photography is completely animated it is cgi it is vfx all the way it's a wonderful uh, and it's very visually uh, beautiful right the terminator 1984 directed by james cameron This film blends science fiction with action as Arnold Schwarzenegger portrays a cyborg assassin sent back in time to kill a woman whose son will become a future resistance leader. So in this particular movie you will find Arnold Schwarzenegger who is very popular uh, as one of the most muscular actors there is so Arnold Schwarzenegger plays the character of a robot from the future and at one particular scene we will find that Arnold Schwarzenegger's face is ripped off ripped off means it is uh, the skin has come off and therefore half of his face we can see is entirely machine so that is not 
uh, actually what had happened it was again the green screen and chroma key kind of thing so this entire machinery part which was visible that was uh, a, tr a kind of uh, effects visual effects that was given to the film apart from that also actually robotic arms were used in the movie uh, robots were used in the movie but they were again under that stop motion kind of photography so all the tricks that have been used down the ages are used nowadays also but in lesser quantities back to the future trilogy 1985-1990 a time traveling adventure comedy series starring michael j fox and christopher lloyd exploring the consequences of altering the past so this is a trilogy again back to the future it is um, not a very serious kind of movie like let's say terminator or um, the star wars but even then it has uh, a multiple storylines a very strong narrative and very popular among the teenagers avatar 2019 directed by james cameron again avatar is a visually groundbreaking film set on the alien world of pandora featuring a mix of live action and cgi technology we were discussing cgi technology a little uh, back and we also discussed how uh, characters human characters were putting points in their hands and feet and body and the camera which is attached to a computer is reading all the mo motions and actions exactly this is how avatar has been shot Inception 2010 directed by Christopher Nolan this mind bending film follows a group of thieves who enter people's dreams to steal their secrets Inception is uh, mostly animation and sometimes superimposition of two uh, separate um, camera data sets but the idea in Inception is wonderful that is they enter into the mind of another human being and from there they insert an idea or steal an idea gravity 2013 directed by alfonso Cuaron. this gripping film follows a medical engineer sandra bullock and an astronaut george clooney stranded in space after their shuttle is destroyed so gravity is one of uh, the other films apart from interstellar which is very visually stunning if you watch the movie you will keep it in your heart for the rest of your life and it is also physics wise very accurate right so it was a, a shot with the help of animation of course and uh, a little bit of uh, space suits and everything but um, also the movie was shot in space also so all those things are there now we are going to discuss uh, a very few questions but you must remember that not only knowing about science fiction movies is not what it is all about we must also know the purpose and we must also utilize knowing about science fiction movies uh, in a way so that the society benefits from them if we study the questions right in front of us here we will understand or we will start understanding how to utilize the knowledge of science fiction movies that we have in order to contribute to the society number one how have advancements in technology influence the portrayal of futuristic worlds and special effects in science fiction movies in what ways does the depiction of space travel and space exploration differ between classic space opera movies like the original star wars trilogy and recent space based films like gravity or the martian martian was discussed when we were discussing space travel so if you want to know more about it you can just go and get a glimpse at the entire novel by andy wire how has virtual production technology as seen in the movies like the mandalorian changed the way science fiction films are shot and produced compared to traditional green screen techniques used in older films in what ways do older science fiction films such as a trip to the moon pave the way for the portrayal of otherworldly environments while newer films like inception utilize a combination of practical and digital effects to achieve similar imaginative visuals so once we are clear on this once we have a very good idea of how this is happening we will also get to know that 
we need to create these kind of movies in order to uh, drive home the idea of the enhancement of science and technology to the common people who are not that much in touch with technology in order to spread the awareness of what the future holds for us we need help of, of such movies but it can also be that these movies can be uh, understood or misinterpreted so for that we need to be cautious this is a list of references that we have over here. If you want, you can go through it. Archaeologies of the Future, The Desire Called Utopia and other science fiction, science fiction film, film, The Key Concepts, Screening Space, The American Science Fiction Film, Alien Zone, Cultural Theory and Contemporary Science Fiction Cinema, Using Science Fiction Movies in Introductory Physics, the impact of science fiction film on student understanding of science. So this last particular article that I've taken, this is exactly the purpose. In order to encourage young minds to understand science, to discuss science, to understand or talk about space, time and its continuum, we can make use of these science fiction movies as examples. So I hope you have liked this lecture. We have discussed a lot of new things, a variety of uh, uh, options for uh, the technology. One is uh, how the movies are made. Another is what the movies show. With all of this knowledge, I want all of us to make this society much more scientifically aware. Thank you for watching and having your patience. See you in the next lecture. Hello and welcome to this piece of literary snippet. Perhaps the most popular literary genre after novel is the short story. Sharp, compact narratives whose charm lies not only in what is said, but also in what remains unsaid. Today I'll be reading one of the shortest instances of a short story that I have ever encountered. And Indeed, the very charm of this particular story that I'm going to read out today lies in the way it abruptly ends. It is an ancient tale from Mesopotamia, which has been retold by several authors, among whom the name of Somerset Mom stands out. Uh, the adaptation that I'll be reading out is perhaps the closest to the one that Mom wrote. The story is titled, in all of its adaptations almost, as Appointment in Samara. Here is the story. A merchant in Baghdad once sent one of his servants to the market. The servant was supposed to buy provisions for the merchant, but when he returned, he came back empty-handed. Indeed, the servant had all gone wiet, and trembling with fear, he told his master that he had met death in the marketplace. When I entered the market, the servant said to his master, I was jostled by a woman, and when I turned to look at her, I saw that she was death. I am very scared, master, because death looked at me with a threatening gesture. Can you please lend me your horse so that I can fly away from Baghdad to the town of Samara and thereby escape death? The master 
being a good man, gave his servant his best horse and saw him gallop off to Samara to escape death. Then the master himself went to the marketplace and confronted death. Why did you make a threatening gesture to my servant? Asked the master to death. And death replied, It was not a threatening gesture. Rather, it was a start of surprise. I was astonished to see your servant here today because this evening I have an appointment with him in Samara. See you. Episode.